Him. This video is about the algorithm of advanced life support and this algorithm is very very important because not only in obstetric and gynecology but also in any field when a patient is unresponsive in the hospital uh, we need to follow this algorithm. So uh, this is the basic step which we take. Uh, first of all, when a patient is unresponsive, uh, means the patient is not uh, breathing or only having the occasional uh, gasp, then what we have to do, we have to call for help, okay? And we have to call the resuscitation team, okay? Uh, so, patient is lying and we found that uh, he or she is not breathing. There are occasional gasps. So, what we have to do first of all? After calling the resuscitation team, we have to follow the proper uh, CPR ratio, that is the 30 into 2, okay? And uh, means we have to give 30 thrusts and 2 breaths. And at the same time, we will attach the defibrillator or monitor and minimize interruptions, okay? So, we have taken this step. Okay, we have started CPR, we have attached the defibrillator and uh, we will try our best to minimize interruption and this situation will be in the hospital means uh, uh, whenever we are outside the hospital then ALS protocol will not be able to follow, we will not be able to follow ALS protocol then definitely we will go for PLS protocol. So we will assess the rhythm as we have attached the defibrillator. Now what will happen? Okay. Um, we will try to find out what type of um, rhythm is showing. Okay, if we have the shockable rhythm like we have v VF, ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, then what we have to do? We have to give one shock. Okay, as you can see from here. <clears throat> there is we have the shockable um, VF pulseless VT we give one shock to the patient and after giving shock we will immediately resume CPR for two minutes and also uh, we will minimize the interruption okay on the other hand if we have the non-shockable rhythm okay like uh, PEA pulseless electrical activity or asystole what we will do we will immediately resume CPR for two minutes and at the same time, uh, we will try our best to minimize interruption, okay? And what happens in third situation, in the middle situation, that there is um, return of spontaneous circulation, okay? If we have return of spontaneous circulation, we don't have EF, VT, PEA or ACSTD, but the return of spontaneous circulation, then what we have to do, we have to do immediate post cardiac arrest treatment okay we will use a b c d e approach okay control oxygenation and ventilation 12 lead ecg will be attached precipitating cause uh, will be taken off temperature control will be done therapeutic hypothermia or a uh, th therapeutic hypothermia depending on the situation we will do the therapeutic control of the temperature okay and it's very important to remember a few points during cpr during cpr ensure high quality cpr rate depth required secondly we have to plan action uh, before in interrupting cpr we have to give oxygen give advanced airway and capnography continuous chest compression when advanced airway in place and vascular access like intravenous or interosseous excess. Sometimes intravenous excess is not possible and we will go for interosseous excess. Okay, at the same time we will give adrenaline after every 3 to 5 minutes and correct reversible causes. So these are important principles we need to follow. Then what are the reversible causes? Reversible causes should be kept in mind and we have uh, to try our best to reverse those causes like hypoxia. If patient has got hypoxia, then we will give oxygen, hypovolemia, hyperhyperkalemia means metabolic state should be corrected, hypothermia. So these are 
4H and 4T include thrombosis like coronary or pulmonary, tamponade, cardiac toxin, and tension pneumothorax. So all these things need to be corrected. So that is basically the, the main algorithm of